In this tutorial, what we're going to take a look at doing is getting started with the week two task in the PyGlime unit. So before I can get stuck into this, what I'm going to need is to pick up a few things. The first thing I need is the template file for this lesson, which we're going to use to bolt our code onto. So I'm here at the moment on Born to Code, uh, and I'm over in the lesson two page. And right at the top of the page, it talks here about picking up a template. So I'm going to right click on there, go down to save link as, and what I'll then need to do is navigate into my H drive, into my computer science folder, year nine, Pi game. Hopefully you're nice and organized. If you don't have these folders, it's not the end of the world. Just remember where you put it, but make sure it goes into your H drive. And I'm going to rename this a little bit, I think. Uh, and I'm going to call this one uh, week two template like that, .py. Make sure you leave the .py on the end. That's important. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have some problems later. And I'll save that. What I also need to have open as well is uh, PyCharm, which I've got just here. And uh, I've you know, opened this up previously, so when I come to it, hopefully I should have in this top left-hand corner here uh, my files that I was previously working on. If you don't have those open, then what you can always do is you can always go File and Open. Uh, for some reason, with PyCharm, it always, always, always drops you straight into what's called the C drive on your computer. That's the physical uh, drive on your computer. That's not very helpful. So what I'm doing here, if this happens to you, is I'm scrolling up to the top. This is scroll by scrolling up to the top, just folding that up. And that'll show me the other drives that I've got. And the actual driver wants my H drive. And I think I said computer science. And I think I said year nine. And I think I said Pygame. There it is. Uh, and what you actually grab when you go file and open is you can open either the folder or, more helpfully, you can open the template file, which is what I'm doing here. So after a bit of thinking, the template file will be loaded up. Sometimes you get a bit of this. We'll get rid of that. Uh, and let's start to think today about what we're trying to achieve. So in this session, what we're specifically interested in is building up some animation. At the moment, with this program that I've got here, with all this what we call boilerplate code, just code that you need to be able to get started, it doesn't currently do much. But let's just see what it does do. Uh, I'm going to click on Run. <coughs> and then I'll use Run here, the one that's got Alt-Shift-F10 next to it. The computer says, what is it you'd like to run? Uh, and specifically, what I'd like to run is this week two template file just here. So let's click on that. And if we do everything correctly, get a black screen like so with nothing in it. That's a good sign. It means we're in a good position to start coding. I don't know why that jumped up. Let's drag that back down again. OK, so what's the first thing we're going to do? Well, the first step today, and again, we can use the notes from Born to, um, Born to Code here to help us. The first step in drawing our shape is to remember that we want to animate today. And uh, if you want to animate something, it means the position of whatever you're going to draw is going to constantly change. Uh, and the uh, the effect we're going to go for is we're going to draw a little square on the screen at a particular point. And then what we're going to do is about a thirtieth of a second later, we're going to wipe the screen. And then once we've wiped the screen, we're going to draw the same square again, but a tiny amount further across the screen than it was before. We'll just repeat that process. So we'll be effectively drawing a series of squares that are just a little bit further right than the previous one was. And the illusion of that, as long as you do it fast enough, uh, is when the human eye looks at it, it looks like we're seeing motion. So let's get stuck in to that. So just reading through my online notes just here, the first thing I want to do is to create a variable to store the x coordinate, which is going to be this, the x coordinate of where I'm going to draw my square. It needs to be a variable because it's going to change. I couldn't just say repeatedly draw rectangle in the same spot. That wouldn't work. So I'm highlighting that line of code, copying it into my Pi game, and I've got to put it in the right place. And the right place, just like the instructions says, is in the section that's your setup section of your program. In this template I've got at the moment, there's two parts. The setup starts up here, there it is, and that stops uh, well, just here really, I suppose. And then you've got the actual game loop. Those are the instructions that happen over and over and over again. And the game loop instructions all happen in here. So we're going to put our code in two different places. One of them is underneath this bit here, I'll just wedge it all just under there, and the other part will be inside this game loop, specifically in here. So enough talking, let's do some do. So I'm going to leave myself a couple of blank lines. And I'm going to paste in that line from borntocode.com. So I've set up and said the player one's x coordinate is going to be zero initially. So that's going to be over on the far left hand edge of the screen. Okay, let's see what Born to Code tells me to do next. 
Uh, there's a nice reassuring screenshot that I'm doing the right sort of thing, that's good. So what I'm now going to do is pick up the next batch of code, which is this little bit just here. Uh, let's have a look at what these actually do. If you just copy and paste these things blindly, then you're not going to learn a huge amount. But if we try and take a second to look at what the code does, and it's always very specific, hopefully that'll help. So I've said I've got a variable called player1, and player1 is uh, me talking to Pygrain, asking it to draw something, specifically drawing a rectangle. And then within that rectangle, we're providing these extra details just here. Look, these are the details, and let's remind ourselves. Uh, so the first thing, I'm saying that the rectangle needs to be drawn onto the window that we've called screen, that the color of the rectangle I would like is going to be green. Okay, and then the next two numbers here, these are the x, y coordinates of where on the screen to draw my rectangle. So I'm drawing it at location player 1x, which is 0, that's what my previous line said, so it's going to be at 0 across 200 down from the top left corner. And at that point on the screen, I want a shape drawing, which is 20 pixels by 20 pixels. That's what I'm asking for. And in my next line, I'm saying that the variable player 1x, which is currently 0, needs to become worth player 1x which is worth 0, plus 4. So after that line's run, player 1x is now worth 4. And the next time it'll be worth 8, and then 12, and then 16. It'll keep going up. So I'm going to grab those two lines of code, copy them into Pygame, and those ones come in this part here that says your code starts here. So I'm going to click there, and I'm going to paste. It's really important to remember, if you look at the code, you can see this for loop that we're a part of here. We actually want this code to happen as part of that. So I must ensure that I use the tab key, it's just above caps lock, to bring in that line and bring in that line. So let's uh, hit play up in the top right and let's see what that does. Okay, so uh, what you can see here then is I've got my animation. It wasn't quite what we expected, uh, but what I've got instead is I've got a situation here where the uh, the line passed all the way from one edge of the screen all the way along to the other. So let's try and unpack that a little bit and see if we can explore what caused that to happen. So what just happened was we saw that big thick green line. And let's go step by step think about exactly what our program is being told to do. Because again, they only ever do exactly what we tell them. So, the first time I came into this loop, what I told the computer to do was to draw me a rectangle on the screen in green at location uh, 0 on the x, 200 on the y, and it drew that. What I then did was I took this variable, player1x, and I added 4 to it. So if it was 0 before, now it's 4. We've already said that. The computer then draws that onto the screen, and then it comes back to the top of the loop. And the next thing it does is it draws another green rectangle, this time at location uh, 4, 200, that's 20 by 20, adds another few and draws again. So what I'm actually doing is I'm stamping green squares on top of green squares on top of green squares. And the effect that gives is what we saw a second ago. So what I'm doing in real terms is I'm just putting a load of uh, green stamp squares that run along each other. So I get that snake effect. What I really need to do is to tell the computer is to tell the computer that once it's drawn a green square, uh, it needs to clear the screen before it draws the next one. And that way I'll get the illusion of my little square moving along. Back on borntocode.com, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that I talk about much the same thing. But now what I'm going to do is grab this next line, which tells it to take the screen and fill it up with pure black color. And so after I've, or um, well before even I've drawn my rectangle, I can blank the screen out. So let's do that. So I'm up here give it a line to put underneath it, and I'll paste that in place. Just like before, make sure that your code is indented, so it's part of our loop, because if it's not, you're going to get some syntax errors. So let's try that now. Okay, so this time you can see my nice green square bouncing across to the end of the screen uh, and eventually running off and stopping. Okay, so this is progress. Again, we've got now something which moves across, we've got some motion. I suppose if I wanted to, um, rather than handling the X coordinate, I could have uh, made it work on Y, so I could have started at the top of the screen and went down the way. I could have done X and Y at the same time, make another variable up here perhaps, and that would have made it move or look like it was moving diagonally. That would have worked very well. But the problem I've still got here now, though, is that eventually that little rectangle eventually reaches the far right-hand edge of the screen. And what I think would be quite nice is if when it hit the edge of the screen, it bounced back and started traveling off uh, left. That would be really, really nice, because that way I've got something I can watch happen more than once. So let's think a bit about how that happens. 
At the moment, to make it draw, uh, move over to the right, what I'm doing is I'm adding 4 to the x coordinate every single time I take a step across. And that makes it move over to the right. If, I, if x was 100 and I added 4 to it, it becomes 104. But how do I make it move left? Well, to do that, rather than adding 4 every single time, what I want to do, oh, it does like this, doesn't it? Um, plonk. What I need to do instead is rather than adding 4 to it every time, I need to take 4 off. So I'm going to write and tweak my code so that once I've hit the far right hand edge of the screen, it starts travelling left again. Let's look at that. As it happens, travelling down the way a little bit, I've got some more code I can take. Here's the code I've already got. You can see this just here. Uh, and what I could do is I can use this idea of a thing called a conditional, an if statement. And what I can say is that if the player one's x coordinate is greater than the width of the screen, so you know if it hits greater than about a thousand, I think it is. If that becomes greater than a thousand, then reset the player one's x position back to zero, and keep running the program. That seems pretty handy. Let's try that. So I'm just going to grab that line. I'm going to copy it back into my code, that can sit underneath here, and I can paste that into position. Just like before, you'll get into the habit of doing this, make sure you tab it in. Let's try that, what does this do? Here it comes, travel, 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 it's going to hit the screen, into the screen. And as soon as it does it, it comes back to the start. So, again, an improvement, but I'd really much rather it bounced left, right, left, right, left, right instead. But I think we can probably use this same idea, this concept, and add to it a little bit. Let's go back to Born to Code and see what we've got. So, this time, when I'm in here, what I'm going to do is, rather than saying that my speed of my player is always 4, I'm going to make the speed and I'm going to store it in a variable, like I've got just here. This way, I can have it as 4, or, when it's time, I can make it become minus 4 instead, or 5, or 6, or 10, so I can also change the speed as well. It gives me a lot more flexibility. That's why variables are a good idea. So let's grab that line and copy it. And I'm going back up to the top where I set up the program in the first place, up in this stage here. And I'm going to paste that into position. Player 1's x speed is 4. And rather than increasing, so player 1 becomes player 1 plus 4. This is the bit where I move my, um, my little square around, isn't it? So rather than plus 4 now, I can instead say player 1 x speed. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. So at the moment, programmatically, nothing's really changed. It still goes by 4 every single time, but I'm storing in a variable, so I've got the flexibility to change it. Okay, what do I do next? Let's go back to Born to Code and see what we had to say over there. Now, at the moment, this is our code. Okay, and again, we said that if I go beyond the width of the screen, then reset then reset back to the, uh, the, the position for the square to be drawn next time back to zero. But we can be a bit more sophisticated than that. Why don't we instead say that rather than resetting it back to zero, let's instead set the speed the player moves at to whatever it is at the moment, but times by minus one. This is a little math trick. You probably know this from your math lessons already. But what this will do, you feed any number and you multiply it by minus one, and it turns it into the negative version of itself. So if the speed was 4, 4 times minus 1 becomes minus 4. When I bounce off on the far left hand side of the screen, we'll come to this later, but if I then take a minus number, like minus 4, and I multiply it by minus 1, multiplying two negatives together turns it back to a positive again. So we might be able to use this idea later on in the badge task to make it bounce left and right. Let's try it now. Here it comes. So in a minute we're going to hit that point, and there it bounces off. What's going to happen, do you think? And it drops off the left-hand edge. Okay, at this point now, it's time for the badge task. The badge task is this. At the moment, it travels and travels and travels until the player's x uh, position is greater than the width of the screen, which is about 1,000 at which point it bounces off back to the left, it starts travelling left and travelling left and travelling left, and we just watch that happen. Why doesn't it bounce when the player's x position becomes less than zero? Interesting question. So, that's the code at this point. Let's now take a second and look at the badge task then. So, to get the silver badge for this particular week, what you need to do is add comments to the code that you've got at this point in time. That'll demonstrate that you understand the code you've written. To write a code in Py write a code, to write a comment in Python, what you need is one of these hash symbols that's just here. Uh, and so I might come on to the end of this line that I've got just here, look, and I can put a hash symbol in there, and I can put this 
line um, and I could write a few words on what it is that I think that line does and I could put another comment on here and that way my teacher will be able to see that I understand what I'm talking about. So you'll need to comment these two lines here because we added these and this one and this one and that one and these two down here as well. So you need to add comments. That'll get you the silver badge. Let's talk about the gold then. Now to make the gold you need to make your own piece of animation using the ideas that we've got here. So what's it saying to do? Well, it's saying to create a circle. Now, we made circles in week one, so if you click on the week one notes, you'll be able to see those. So you'll make a circle, and then what we want is that the circle should appear at position 100, 100, so 100 across, 100 down from the top left corner, uh, your choice of size. It should then move what looks like vertically. Okay, I can see that X isn't changing the Y is. It's going to move vertically down to 700 pixels down, at which point it'll then disappear and reappear at 100, 100 again, at 100, 100 again like that, and it'll just repeatedly do it. So it'll look like a little circle that rains down over and over. So that's the gold badge. Finally, the platinum badge is to make a shape, so you can use rectangle, circle, anything you wish. But what we want this time is for it to move diagonally, so it's going to be horizontally and vertically simultaneously, and to bounce off all the sides of the screen. So when the uh, when your blob, when your shape strikes just here, we want it to start coming back. When it hits the bottom, it'll start travelling up. And when it hits there, it'll bounce off and reflect, uh, and so on. On the face of it, that sounds an incredibly difficult task, but if you were to try it... And, uh, and and just take one step at a time, like just get the horizontal working and then just add the vertical, you might find it's not as bad as you think. But I don't want to say too much about that, because again, that's a platinum task. So, good luck.